uh, in very simple terms if i have to say it's like it talks about web 1 being like the static uh, like the time of the internet where there were like sites like just you know uh, wikipedia or something that were just listing like information that was like the internet at that time and in web 2 we moved towards all of these huge uh, giants like uh, facebook and instagram and all of these uh like companies that were collecting our data they were owning our data and they were like you know whenever they have to pay out uh, creators then they were creating a monopoly over it by taking like 60 or 70% or whatever uh, money that was made off of it and now we are moving towards <laughs> everyone welcome back to my channel the sarthak show where we discuss about tech career product and life and today we have a very special guest with us neha so she is a very very motivated person and she is working wonders in web3 and today this is going to be the topic for today's video and podcast where we will discuss more about web3 how web3 works and how you can become a web3 developer or how you can break into web3 and what are the future career options so yeah welcome neha to the channel and thank you so much for taking out for time for this particular podcast and with the start like how can you share a little bit about yourself and your profession yeah yeah sure first of all uh, thanks a lot sarthak for having me a little bit about me like uh, i started off as a web2 developer uh, i did a lot of like open source stuff uh, outreachy uh, google season of docs and all of these programs and i transitioned uh, into actually working on web3 so then i started working uh, with like uh, companies like polygon and build space and uh, did a lot of uh, work on the solidity side like smart contract development and try to immerse myself in the web3 community as much as i can uh, by being a part of community like this is something that you would hear a lot if you are a part of uh, web3 uh, but yeah being a lot of being a part of a lot of communities and contributing to wherever possible so uh, that is that is like what i was doing and now i'm finally working on my own venture in web3 Uh, which is social three uh, where we are trying to solve uh, the recruitment problem uh, in web three so that is a little bit about me yeah phenomenal journey and i think uh, uh, quite an interesting move towards where you are working from web 2 and moving towards web 3 how are you a part of communities and working on your own product in web 3 so uh, but since we are hearing a lot about it but most of the audience is still not aware what is web 3 yeah what are the nuances of it how it works what is it different from or how it is different from web 2 So, do you want to shed some light on that as well? What is Web three? Yeah, sure. So, I think whenever I like whenever I have to talk about Web three, the first thing that comes to my mind is that meme where you know, like uh, I we don't know about Web three now. We are too scared to ask about it, and that is like a lot of people like you know their emotion. Uh, in very simple terms, if I have to say, it's like uh, I think al- already a lot of you folks have seen like uh, a very simple visual which talks about Web one. being like the static uh, like the time of the internet where there were like sites like just you know uh, wikipedia or something that were just listing like information that was like the internet at that time and in web 2 we moved towards all of these huge uh, giants like uh, facebook and instagram and all of these uh, like companies that were collecting our data they were owning our data and they were like you know whenever they have to pay out uh, creators then they were creating a monopoly over it by taking like 60 or 70% or whatever uh, money that was made off of it and now we are moving towards web3 and web3 means that everything that you're putting out there it is all owned by you every every sort of an economy that is going to be created now onwards is going to be a community owned economy it is going to be decentralized in the nature that there is not going to be a hierarchy of like some central authority controlling or like deciding on certain decisions in fact we all are going to be the stakeholders in terms of any decision that has to be made and that is more or less what web3 means but uh, how this decentralization would work or how this is going to create a huge impact uh, over web2 uh, that is something i'm very curious about absolutely so uh, if we talk about web2 right so um, so my question here would be like whenever you like get uh, stocks of a certain company or something right Uh, so do you make do you get a chance to make uh, like be a part of the decision making process right that is something that you have to ask yourself but if you talk about the token economies that is in web3 so for example if you hold tokens of a particular protocol 
then you can become a part of their governance process that is whenever they have to make a decision you actually get to vote on their proposal that okay yes or no or something and that is the kind of uh, thing that happens in web3 like everything is actually truly decentralized and not just in terms of governance also the profits that any uh, like uh, company or something that they make of it that is going to be split in terms of like uh, not based on like a hierarchical model that was happening but it's going to be split in the terms of like how we are seeing uh, in daos uh, contributors are getting rewarded for whatever work they are doing and it is not going to be completely controlled by some central authority so that is more or less how the decentralization aspect comes into it uh, if we talk about how this decentralization aspect is coming into it why can why can we trust that this decentralized process is actually taking place and this is just not like some gibberish it's because we it's backed by blockchain technology which makes mm-hmm. sure that everything that we are doing is going to be done in a very in a decentralized manner uh, in a secure manner and immutable manner like whatever things that we have made and promised no one can just come in and be like okay we can change this and you know just run away with money or something so this is why we are able to execute all of uh, this web3 stuff through uh, blockchain yeah interesting i think uh, that makes sense and how we want to, to it to be very equal among ourselves uh, that would be one way to move forward and since you mentioned about blockchain i think most of the audience are still not aware about it or they uh, think that they uh, know certain bits about it but i wanted to want you to explain it in better way if they can know what is actually back blockchain so blockchain is basically just a distributed like data ledger uh you can just think of it like okay uh we have some data everyone has to maintain a copy of that data and it has to be in sync with it whenever we want to add some new uh, uh like data or record to that existing data all of us we have to agree that this new uh, part which is going to be added we all have to validate it that make sure that no one tries to lie or lie or cheat in this way right so mm-hmm. this is in that way trustless this is why that decentralization aspect comes into it and that is when that when whenever that new record gets added to the data and we update that blockchain and we just broadcast it that okay look this is the new data and all of us are maintaining this copy so this is more or less uh, how i would describe uh, blockchain and uh, whatever data we are adding we are making sure that everything has like the right time stamps which means like uh, everything is like you know uh, like full proof in the sense no one can like uh, the transactions are not, not reversible in nature it's immutable it's all marked by the time stamps and uh, yeah that is more or less a very high level overview of what blockchain is amazing i think uh, there are enough ton of videos and books out there for explaining the concept just the blockchain but how you have explained short short stain with analogies that how a blockchain is just a distributed ledger and one has to maintain a copy of the ledger and all of the include parties has to agree on that single uh, edit that is going to or the addition that is going to happen that's it helps um, keeping the data secure or uh, making it more robust in that sense so yeah and i think the uh, after listening all of this one of the things that will pop up into the audience mind will how they can get into web3 what are the things that they have to learn what are the processes that they have to follow is it something like a a uh, course or certification that they have to do or how you can learn or what is the thing that they are required so uh, this is an excellent question by the way how can someone break into web3 and uh, like i i do not know what's the audience that will be watching this video but one thing that i want to put out there right now is that web3 does not mean just developers or just smart contract developers web3 means like anyone can enter into web3 for any sort of uh, like domain that they want to work to be it business development be it marketing be it hr anything all the web3 protocols are hiring for all of these positions so like we have this misconception that web3 is all about like just developers or something that is not the case you can enter it into like being any of these different uh, falling into any of these different categories and if you're talking about how you can break into web3 so first step would be to just break down all of this web3 jargon so you hear about blockchain you hear about daos you hear about nfts go and learn about each of these terms right go and learn about each of these terms there are a lot of resources right now available so you can be a part of like a uh, learn web3 you can be a part of odc dao you can be a part of all of these different uh, uh, resources and platforms that can help you to just understand and break down this first this web3 jargon 
once you're through with that the second step i would say is to actually be a part of the communities and be a user of the different defi or any sort of protocols that you can actually use so uh, maybe you can just start by uh, investing certain uh, amount of money into it and then you can just uh, uh, start by like maybe using uniswap or maybe you can just uh, like you know uh, complete some courses or something get some nfts out of it see how it's like you know working you can go to open see check out like different nfts okay this is how they are priced they are priced with this is the name and description and everything that is there once you get all of that idea that okay i know what the terms are i know how to actually use it the third step would be to just like get into it like you know uh, if if i'm a developer let's say my my idea would be to like uh, go to like there's some like three or four resources i also covered a video completely talking about the different development based resources on my uh, youtube channel where we talk about crypto zombies bill space and quest book as the three mm-hmm. resources that i would say for someone wanting to get into it from a development perspective that is on the smart contract side that being said i also want to highlight that a lot of these protocols are hiring for front end and back end positions so any person from with like a web2 based experience can come in and if they if they show enough promise or passion for being in web3 that is by knowing all of these web3 jargon and by being an active user of all of these different protocols they definitely stand a really good chance to like become uh, to like be hired from in, into any of these protocols so that is more or less how i would break like the steps on how you can get started uh that being said uh be uh, be really active on tech twitter like crypto twitter in fact because lots of things happening there if you'll go through it you'll understand it okay there's so many things that are going on people are building on to this and that and because this in this uh like this complete ecosystem is very small it's very new it gives you a lot of uh like it, it gives you a lot of uh, power to like do a lot of things right so if you will go into web2 and work at a certain uh, like job you might have a power to like change like a very small thing but since this infrastructure is like very new if you go there you can actually have ownership over like moving huge things and that would be really exciting to work at so i would say more or less this is how you can get started in step wise and why actually this is a really good time to get started so yeah i think that's that's great and uh since the companies and things are starting from scratch that's how you have an awesome chance over here to build something from very scratch or uh be at the inception of a lot of different things or different new projects and products so web3 is uh increasing day by day at the usage and the how people are understanding and using it on daily life and i understand that uh that will be something uh, as how the transition from web 1 to web 2 look like that is the transition that we are expecting for web 2 to web 3 but uh, in exponential growth with many 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 scale folds but uh, how do you see the future of web 3 or what are the pot- potential uh, things that can be unlocked with the help of web 3 that were um, uh, that were not feasible before or what is something that you see uh, future will hold in terms of web 3 absolutely amazing question again uh the the first thing that i want to talk about is that right now uh, like as of now the market is very like as as you probably would have seen it's very bearish and there is a lot of negative sentiment around uh, startups and web3 in general right now because a lot of offers being rescinded and all of these things happening uh, but but the thing that we have to look at is the very long term vision for what this thing, thing can bring and this is like the very start of it this is a time that you can actually focus and build a uh, really cool things that can actually empower the future for like you know whatever is happening ahead this is the time like how uh, in like 19 like uh, like how when the just internet companies were starting right and everyone was like building onto it and a lot of people were saying that okay this is probably not going to work and this is just going to and that's the sentiment that a lot of people do share about web3 as well but uh web3 is just not blockchain technology or it's not just not like forced use of blockchain technology everywhere because here we are unlocking new economic models and that i think is something that people do not take into account uh when we are there are actual com- countries complete countries that have adopted like bitcoin as one of their currencies so this is not something that is just being like you know okay and and the reason why is the the like how we are talking like why this whole thing matters so much is that bitcoin actually provided like when bitcoin came into picture bitcoin actually provided a way to decentralize money 
and this was not possible before like you know like any person can like own money right now and if you're talking about the normal currencies it is affected by inflation and any person can go and print new money and all of these things can happen the government can be like you know can control all of these things but we are actually talking about the state of decentralization where uh, like any person like the common man can own bitcoin and like there it's going to be ruled by a smart contract it's going to like sorry it's it's going to be ruled by like uh, already set uh, like mechanism not like not for bitcoin but anything that we are going to do it's going to be ruled by an already set mechanism and no one can just come in and change that it's already set in stone and and that is something that that was not happening earlier with any of the technologies that like any of the things that we were looking at so this definitely unlocks something that is beyond just the blockchain technology this is something that can bring true ownership back to people and break monopolies that was happening earlier and that i think is like a huge huge thing a uh, statement for uh, what what we can expect in the coming years we are building we are at a very early stage right now we are building the infrastructure but in the coming years i definitely believe that this can be huge and not just from a perspective of me feeling this or believing in this too much you can actually see the flow of money that is happening in this direction with all of the vcs funding very heavily in web3 as well as the different tech giants also investing a lot in web3 if we talk about microsoft if we talk about facebook all of meta like all of these companies are investing a lot in web3 and if they did not see promise that they would probably not be doing that so that is why i am uh, extremely like bullish on what we are about to see ahead in uh, web3 so yeah i think that makes sense because uh, market sentiments and everything are uh, bound to happen between and flip between bullish and bearish and generally we have to take a long term perspective and see uh, what are the things that can be done in the long term uh, view as well so uh and since the things that you have mentioned that it has unlocked a lot of new potentials before uh, a lot that that were not possible before and how people have started using it countries have started adopting it or how people in their common lingos have started going uh, berserk on these things like uh, you know most of the gen z's are uh, know about bitcoin and how they want to get invested in themselves they might not know the nitty gritties of it then but they still want to use it and that is something the direction that we will move forward that more more and more people will move towards it and larger economies larger vc and hedge funds and startups will move in this direction i think yeah so thank you so much neha for comprising all of these details into this short podcast with uh, explaining them all all of these things in a very wonderful way i really enjoyed it i really like this uh, and i hope that our audience will be able to pick out a lot of different things audience if you are listening in you can uh, reach out to sneha from the linkedin, uh, linkedin link i will put in the description box below and also if you have any doubts comments or queries you can mention that in the comment section and uh, i will see you in the next video till then take care bye bye